Apologies for my voice acting skills, I have none. And this story is out of nonsense. <laughs> I started writing it one night while I was waiting for the kids to fall asleep. And I didn't really know where I was going with it, so I just ended it. And I'ma share it anyway, because, because I'ma share it anyway. <laughs> Hannah sat in the back seat of her mother's Hyundai a knot of anxiety growing bigger and bigger in her belly as they got closer to Hampshire Hills. Susan, Hannah's mother, had been given a once in a lifetime chance, a work trip to Italy that they couldn't turn down. Hannah was happy for her mother, but dreading the fact it meant she had to spend the summer holidays at her grandparents' house. Now, Hannah loved her granny and pops dearly, but was terrified of their house. Normally, they would come to visit, and as such, Hannah had only visited her grandparents' property in the hills once when she was seven, and she still had nightmares from it. Susan had always laughed it off and told her not to worry, the ghosts weren't bad and nothing to worry about. Easy for her to say, she'd grown up in that house and was used to not being spooked by the spooky. Just make friends with them, her mother had said. Grammy will help. Grammy, a.k.a. Mary Meredith, semi-secret coven leader and the Hampshire Hills CWA's short crust queen, was feeling just as apprehensive of Hannah's visit as Hannah was. Hannah was now 15 and Mary knew all the energies that called her property home were bubbling up with excitement for the visit. While Susan had grown up in the house, playing with nature spirits and ghosts in her youth, she hadn't inherited Mary's full abilities and therefore was protected from the darker aspects and entities. But if Hannah proved to be stronger, which was a high possibility considering it tended to flow in and out of the generations, she would be seeable and susceptible to the darker parts of the universe. Even at seven, Hannah had sensed things in the house and the woods that her mother could not. This fact is what Mary was ruminating on over a cup of tea as she saw Susan and Hannah pulling into the driveway. Up in the room that would be hers for the next six weeks, Hannah was hopping into bed for her first night. Moonrider and Sunny, her grandmother's cats, were sitting next to each other on the rug by the bed watching her intently. Both cats had short fur with Moonrider being jet black all over, while Sunny was a patchwork of tan, brown and white splotches colliding. Both cats had been keeping close to Hannah since the moment she walked through the front door. Moonrider seemed quite friendly and fond of cuddles, belly rubs and head scratches, whereas Sunny had darted out of reach the few times Hannah had tried to pat him. Leaving the nightstand light on, Hannah hopped under the covers, pulling them up over her head. That's not gonna help, human, came a soft voice. Hannah sat bolt upright, trying to locate the speaker, 
but all she could see was the two cats. Moonrider jumped up onto the bed, looking up into Hannah's face. Don't worry, we'll keep an eye on you while you sleep. We'll keep you safe, came a second voice. She probably can't hear us, came the first voice again. Mary seems to think she'll be able to, said the second. Hannah's eyes darted from cat to cat. They weren't talking out loud, but her instincts screamed at her that it was their voices she had heard in her head. That and earlier in the day, she had thought her grandmother had been on the phone, only to find she was standing at the kitchen sink with Sunny sitting next to her on the countertop, no phone in sight. I can hear you. Fantastic, said the perkier of the two voices. Moonrider? questioned Hannah. Yes, Hannah! Moonrider's voice was louder now and seemed to be bubbling over with joy. Hannah turned to look at the cat on the floor. Sunny? Hmm, sleep now, human. Hannah, stunned, began to pull the covers back over herself. Wait, protect me from what? And how can I hear you in my head? The next morning, Hannah had a rather long, initially awkward and overwhelmingly confusing conversation with her grandmother. Her head was spinning by the end of it. You see, dear, there was no point in telling you about the cats unless you could hear them for yourself. It can't be taught, you see. At this point, the insanity of the fact Hannah could hear the cats in her head didn't concern her at all. It was all the other stuff her grandmother had tried to convey to her about the balance of energies, tales of past secret meetings and rituals she was describing, and the fact that her grandmother's property was considered a safe haven for anything out there needing a place to call home. Why has mum never told me any of this? Well, dear, when your mother was young, I had the place watered to the point that even my abilities were slightly suppressed here. Once your mother grew up and be it became evident she hadn't inherited the full strength of my gifts, I removed them all. She went out into the world to live as normal of a life as she could, having to put aside the memories of nightly tea parties with the trees in Tehran, secret coven meetings and such. It was always meant to be my job to introduce you to these things if the gifts grew within you. Right, um, okay. Uh, rubbing her head, Hannah stumbled away from the kitchen table. Um, I think I'm going to go lie down. With Moonrider right behind her, Hannah slowly made her way back up to her bedroom. Sonny was curled up on the windowsill, his head turning towards her as she entered the room. More to herself than either of the cats, Hannah mumbled, Who or what is it her on? The bane of my existence, came Sonny's voice. Oi, that's not nice, said Moonrider. Turon's a 300-year-old shape-shifting demon that lives in your pop's garden shed. At this point, Hannah collapsed and passed out on the floor. When Hannah woke up, she was tucked into her bed, Moonrider fast asleep next to her head on the pillow. A red-headed girl, who looked about her age, sat in the seat by the window, watching her with a smile on her face. Hello, I'm Turon. Oh, was all Hannah managed to say. What? Am I not what you're expecting? smirked Turon, their shape going fuzzy and fading out until it snapped back and a bald man who looked closer to her mother's age was sitting in the chair. Is this better? Or maybe you'd prefer. Their shapes started to go fuzzy again as Sunny sprinted into the room and launched themselves where Turon's face had just been. They both disappeared from the room with an audible pop. Moonrider stood up and lazily stretched. Turon's okay, really, I promise. Hannah leaped out of bed and ran to the bedroom door while she screamed, Grammy! at the top of her lungs. Moonrider happily pranced through the back garden, pausing to sniff at a rabbit burrow briefly before continuing down to the garden shed Turon called home. Hannah stood on the back veranda watching him. She'd been at a grandparent's house for two weeks now and every night another thing came out to say hello. The ghost she'd met all did seem quite friendly, 
with varying degrees of visual solidness and communication skills. They at least had all been respectful enough not to enter Hannah's bedroom uninvited. According to her grandmother, Hannah would probably only have a handful of the house ghosts that would want to interact with her regularly and that they were all harmless. As for Tyrone, she'd said they were mostly harmless and suggested Hannah stop trying to avoid them and maybe even go for a walk with them through the forest to get better acquainted. Hannah was extremely unsettled by how blasé her grandmother was about the whole thing. While out for a walk in the forest with Turon and Moonrider, Hannah slipped and fell down a mysterious opening, a jagged, gaping tear through the forest floor. Turon had been too busy trying to stop Moonrider devouring a forest nymph, so didn't see it happening, or they would have been able to stop it, or so they said. But down Hannah fell, down, 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 until Hannah was human Hannah no more. She died, got ghostified. All the humans who knew her cried, and the ghosts of Hampshire Hills took her to their side. <laughs>
It'd be faster if you walked, you realize that. <laughs> It'd literally be faster if you Oh, now you're picking up speed. There you go. <laughs> Oh my god. <clears throat> I'm waiting for the crash at the end. No, no, he's slowing it down, he's slowing it down. Ah, oh, no crash. Crisis averted. Dinner did not spill.